Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day, and we're continuing our study in Mark chapter 4. Uh, we're wrapping up a section about the parables. Uh, Jesus has been teaching uh, about four parables in, in Mark 4, uh, the gospel records, and we come to the end of this, and he offers, uh, Mark offers this explanation when he says, in verse 33, with many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them with, uh, without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. Uh, Jesus taught in parables because he was trying to make the kingdom of God accessible to the people who were listening to him. You know, uh, the ministry of Jesus drew thousands of people that gather around and press in to hear him. And, and so he wanted to not just share truth directly, which he did, uh, but he also shared it in these stories, these pictures of things around them that communicated to them the eternal truths of the kingdom of God uh, in, in ways that would make them ponder it, in ways that they could remember it, in ways that they could look at their everyday lives and see elements of truth and go, oh, yeah, what was it that, that, that prophet from Galilee said? And of course, we're still studying the parables 2,000 years later, so uh, they stick. And some of those parables that you've heard have really stuck with you in these last couple of weeks. So uh, why did Jesus speak in parables? Now, he, he got more blunt with his own disciples telling them, you know, here's what this means. But why did he speak in parables? And, and I think what he was doing is, is something that, that we need to pay attention to, especially as the church in our culture today, especially as followers of Jesus who want to have influence in our culture today. Uh, because Jesus was speaking truth to people in a way they could hear it. In a way that they could hear it. In other words, he was being culturally relevant in the way that he shared truth. Now, you may or may not have been around churches where they debated whether they should sing traditional music or modern music. Here at Calvary, we do both. You may or may not have been a part of churches when they debated uh, you know, how they were going to communicate the, the gospel, in what language they were going to use. But if you grew up in church, then you, this is going to make sense to you. Uh, there is a language unto the church world itself. Uh, we can speak in code where those who don't know Jesus are completely confused by what we say. We talk about going to a fellowship. We talk about, we call each other brother and sister. We say amen a lot, uh, which nobody outside of church ever does. Uh, we, we have all kinds of, you know, family references to things that are insider language that the world is confused by. Uh, you know, you walk up to somebody on the street who doesn't understand the gospel and you say, are you saved? And they might answer you, from what? Uh, now, that might be a great lead-in to share the gospel or it just might be an annoying way of starting a conversation. So here at Calvary, here, here's kind of some of the things that we think are important. We need to understand the culture of the people we want to share the gospel with. It doesn't mean that we adopt the culture. It doesn't mean that we imitate the culture. It means we need to understand the culture so we can speak into the culture the truth of Jesus in a way that they can hear it, in a way that they can receive it, uh, we, which means that we need to do some things that earn the right to be heard. That's why we serve our communities in Lake Havasu and Parker, because we want to earn the right to be heard. And then when we have that chance to speak, uh, we definitely want to share it in ways that... Uh, Make it understandable. Uh, you see this in kind of all kinds of ways that you may not recognize around the church at Calvary. For instance, uh, sometimes I'll wear a Cardinal's jersey. Uh, what does that have to do with the gospel? Well, it may let some guy walking into the church for the first time who wonders what kind of stuck-up religious idiots we are uh, to know that, that maybe he could hang out with the pastor who is a Cardinal's fan. Uh, when we ask you to turn to a scripture, we actually tell you what page it's on in the Bible. Why do we do that? Some of you grew up uh, doing sword drills where you could find any book of the Bible and, and chapter in a matter of seconds, but most people are biblically illiterate and they don't know where stuff is and we want to help them not feel stupid. So we tell them, here's where the story is. Uh, we don't use a lot of church words if we can help it. We use biblical words, but if it's language that's, you know, only the church uses, we explain it. We want people to understand. We want them to feel informed about what we're talking about. And if we reference in our preaching some Old Testament person or story, we'll take a moment and explain that. Because you may have grown up hearing the story of Moses, and you know that, and I can just simply say, like Moses said, 
But if somebody didn't grow up in church, if they're far from God, they have no idea who Moses is, unless they think he's one of the athletes of the day. So uh, we want to be sensitive to the people who are hearing the message so that they can receive it, so they can understand it, so they can process it. And we're doing that all the time. We're trying to, to understand our culture so that we can meet people where they are and explain the gospel to them where they are in their life so they can meet Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and have their lives transformed completely. After all, that's our mission, to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ through the love of his people. And, and that means that we'll speak in language they can understand and the power of his truth. We'll never compromise the truth, but we will definitely try to put it in word pictures and in phrases and in language that people can understand. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about why we do what we do and why I believe Jesus spoke in parables to the people around him. Have a great day. God bless. And I hope you can understand what God is saying to you.